Next, we're going to be looking at the new warping engine. And there's a few new additions um, with the actual uh, types of time stretching. The new complex mode has the new Elastic Pro algorithm, so it's a bit better and um, sounds a bit cleaner and stuff like that. So, good improvement there. The Beats mode has um, definitely been improved, it's a lot tighter sounding. And we've got a, a selector here where you can select how it sort of loops up when it's time stretching at the end. Um, doesn't seem to make a massive amount of difference, but it, the option's there nonetheless. The big thing that has changed is actually the way we warp. And they've sort of turned it back to front now. Instead of us moving the timeline all the time, we're actually moving the, the beats. And I think this is a massive, massive improvement. Um, it just It's just so much easier to work with beats to get them in time, things like that. There's also these small grey icons here, and these are actually transient detections. So every time there's like a beat or any sort of attack sort of driven sound, you get one of these transients. And this is very similar to sort of recycler or or, or um, QBase's auto detect um, transients feature. So um, it's coming in line with that, and I actually think it's probably more accurate than than any of them. There's no, uh, there's no um, sensitivity meter or anything like that. It just picks them out every time and it seems to be really, really accurate. Once it's done that for uh, an audio file, as I said, it does it automatically uh, in the normal way live does. You can just select them, double click as usual to um, create actual warp markers and then you can just move these about. And you can see now that instead of the actual timeline in the background moving, which is the way previous versions of Ableton worked, the beats are actually moving themselves and I, I think this is fantastic because it just makes the whole process of tightening up beats and warping just so much easier. If you uh, zoom in, you can actually change the transients. So if you want to add a new one or, or whatever, you can add you know the same sort of warp markers as you did before, but they'll still sort of move the actual audio as opposed to moving the timeline. So really, really useful addition. And sort of keeping in line with that, there is uh, another new addition, which is the Groove template mode. Once you have these these transients sort of taken from your groove, or taken from your, your loop, you can create a groove of that by just simply right-clicking and extract groove. And then we can go to our groove library. And we can see there that we've created a new groove and this can be applied then to any MIDI track or audio track or anything like that. And you've got um, functionality there as well for how much of the amount of groove you want to apply. In the same way you used to have the shuffle um, feature up at the top in, in Live 7, it's all now contained under this one sort of groove pool. So you can have multiple grooves for different audio samples and apply them all differently with different varying levels and things like that. So again, it's probably not as simple as, as it has been previously, but there's a lot more functionality and it's I think it's definitely a good addition. The next thing we're going to look at is the groups. So again, this is pretty basic stuff, but again, just really useful. I'll load in a couple of drum loops. We have a couple of drum loops, a MIDI file, and various other things. And we've looked at sort of grouping tracks before in, in some of the other modules and why we'd want to do that. If you want to group up a, uh, you know, all your drums together in one track and apply a compressor. Previously, we would have had to create a new track and um, have that input set to um, each individual uh, other channel, root it all in and, and things like that. And it was quite a complicated process and, and all your other channels were still showing and, and it just sort of, yeah, you, you could get... Um, confused quite easily. The new feature simplifies that whole process immensely and is really really useful. Select all the tracks you want to group, right click and group the tracks and it basically assigns all the outputs of all these individual tracks to this master group now and you can also hide hide the group. So again basic stuff but very 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 useful and something that I'll be definitely using a lot of. And along that same vein 
you can now adjust multiple parameters at the same time. So if we select three tracks, we can actually adjust the parameters at the same time. Again, really handy for live if you were wanting to, you know, bring up all your sort of pads at once or, or whatever, you know. So again, an extremely handy feature. The next thing we're going to look at is the new zoom feature. And this is, I think it's quite strange, but interesting nonetheless. If you've got a really high resolution monitor and you're playing on stage, you could zoom right out. You can zoom to 50% and all the way back in. So it's good, good, good if you want to see everything on screen at, at the one time or if you've got a really big set in a range mode and you want to see everything at the same time. It would definitely help for arranging, you know, just being able to zoom in there. At the minute it's it's hidden away in this menu, which I think is a bit strange. I think it would be better if it was sort of somewhere on the front. Hopefully they'll maybe move it there. We're only on this sort of first couple of days of the beta test, so there's still plenty of time for them to, to move that. Um, the next and last thing I'm going to look at is the crossfade. And um, again, it's a simple function that basically means whenever you put two audio tracks together, they automatically crossfade. Now, instead of sort of just joining together, and a lot of time you were getting clicks and different things like that when you were joining audio files, and now we've got crossfade. So it's a very handy feature if you're comping vocals or, or doing any sort of audio editing. Um, Crossfades are pretty much essential, so that's another good addition. And that's pretty much all, all the main stuff. There are other features, um, Max for Live and the, sh and the sharing facilities, which I um, aren't included in this version. But as soon as we get hold of them, I'll, I'll definitely pass, pass the info on. If you want to ask any questions, do so in the forums, and I'll be glad to help. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.